Hey, I'm Jag. I'm the CEO of the Atlas Society, and I'm here with Michael Newberry, one of my dearest friends, an amazing, world-renowned artist, and also a judge of the Atlas Art Contest. And we have a very special occasion today. We have Icarus Landing joining us here at Scorpio. So would you like to tell us a little bit about this painting? Um, Icarus Landing, I painted it in 2000. I uh, thought it was uh, nice bringing in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a twist on the Icarus legend of Icarus flying high and then burning and crashing to earth and dying. And I always felt that that was uh, not, not the way I felt in life. So I felt like go out and explore, go 100% for your dreams. And then you learn from your mistakes and you learn from stuff and then you take up that knowledge and you come back with wisdom and love and you see the earth and being human in a, in a more enlightened way. And how does this reflect the sense of life that Ayn Rand was trying to project? Is it that pride and achievement is um, viewed and celebrated rather than punished? Not. Well, in part, but, but it's more like very simple. It's like crossing the street. You get to the other side. It's goal-directed. So I think that people like to achieve what they set out to do. Like, I want to go move in LA, to move to LA. So you go and move to LA. Well, you've accomplished that goal. So I, I, I see that art happy endings or accomplishment things, it's just simply goal-directed. It's simply just saying, I want to get from here to there. And I think Ayn Rand's done that very well with her heroic novels where um, people accomplish things. So, and at the ends, they accomplish things except for you know, We the Living, where she accomplishes her own freedom, but she ends up dying. But in, in the other books, they, they flourish at the end of the novel. And so, I think that to me is the most simple way is just being goal-directed mm -hmm. and uh, trying to achieve something beautiful or trying to achieve something you would like to experience. Now you have been reaching out to a lot of the artists that you have in your community, people that follow you on social media, and how have you found the reaction to the Atlas Art Contest? I have found it um, surprisingly good. Um, we talked about risk and reward and struggle and freedom um, as themes and that were broad enough that people who were quirky could enter into the contest. Um, we have some surprising uh, works there that are unique as far as uh, the artists expressing themselves, but um, there was the one, the one in the wom woman in the, in the river with the mud mm -hmm. and she's like pushing against boulders and I thought that was such a great challenge and that's how an entrepreneur would feel. Mm -hmm. or anyone going out you know, trying to do something on their own. I thought it was a beautiful piece. So, so often in the art world, people are exposed to just one set of philosophical ideas. How do you think that the Atlas Art Contest can help challenge or inspire people to look at things in a different way? Well, there's, there's, been, there's been a big movement over the last several years, um, two decades, of moving towards figurative art, of moving towards expressing human values. Um, and, and artists have been embracing it, but they haven't been accept accepted by the status quo of the art world. So they're still knocking on the door. We're still in the museums. The contemporary art is usually installation or postmodern works. They're not, not so much um, uh, authentic, expressive human feelings and things, uh, attitudes. And so um, there's other organizations like the Art Renewal Center that's promoting figurative art. And so the, the Atlas Society doing that and doing it about the you know, passion of the spirit is um, fitting in, dovetailing really nice with a bigger movement that's going on towards celebrating the figure in the arts. Well, n another one of your colleagues, um, Saban Howard, who is one of our judges, uh, is definitely trying to bring that heroic sense of life back to art and uh, also trying to elevate art. So as a judge of the Atlas Art Contest, what are 
you going to be looking for in terms of the entries? There are so many that are really wonderful and worthy, but what is catching your eye? Uh, not any one thing in particular. Um, like I mentioned before, the themes of like uh, risk and reward or struggle and freedom, seeing something that, like I, I talked to someone and said, no, that one's not going to fit at all because I couldn't find the connection at all. Mm -hmm. So you have the theme, but then you also have the spirit of the piece. And in art, arts, uh, you can't just talk about it intellectually because a lot of time a visual art will be expressing in a different kind of a different medium. So I'll look for uh, authenticity, and that's kind of subjective. I will feel it, feel, well, I think I feel it. Um, um, and sometimes uniqueness, something I haven't seen before done in a different way will be appealing to me. Um, and overall, I think if it has a spirit that is um, benevolent, so like a benevolent spirit taking on a an adversarial role, mm -hmm. where you feel like they could be successful. Um, and, um, and artistically, I would say it has life to it. <laughs> well, this cannot be entered into the um, Atlas Art Contest, but benevolent, unique, um, and expressing a, a sense of life that is also heroic. That is not just what I see in a gross landing, but that's what I see in you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>